Hey guys, in my garage today, I got this. It's a Yamaha XJ750. And the wiring is totally busted on it. Someone tried to hack it apart. I don't know what they did to it. You can see they cut the fuse box out. And I'm gonna rewire this whole thing from scratch. So take a look, they, I mean, they cut the fuse box out. They put uh, a couple inline fuses in. We got wires over here just hanging loose. Got a lot of tape job. We got a whole lot of mess. It's really crappy. I mean, look at all this. So I don't know what someone did to this, but I'm assuming it's pretty crappy. And uh, we're just going to start from scratch. And uh, I'm going to just give this a simple wiring. I am going to rip, just take this whole thing off. I mean, I might put a little speedometer on there or something, but I'm just going to try to get this bike running because there's no way it's running right now. Um, I have heard the starter turn over the motor because I hooked it directly up. I'll show you how you can do that. So if you get a bike, if you ever encounter a bike like this, that's not currently running, if you jump straight on your, this goes to the starter cable here off the solenoid, if you jump straight to that, and then ground the jump jumper cable, I ended up grounded up here somewhere, and it'll turn over the starter. You're hot wiring directly to the starter there, make sure it's a neutral. Uh, but anyways, let me lower this down a bit here. Um, this wiring's got to go. It's really, really got to go. This is bad, bad news. Um, I could probably, I could possibly try to figure this out, but I mean, <laughs> it, it's. Uh, I think I got the wiring diagram over here. It's totally ridiculous. These bikes in the '80s, they went insane with the wiring, <laughs> dropping stuff. They went completely insane with the wiring here. And I all right, guys, I got pretty much all the wiring stripped off of this thing. Got the command center off. I got the main wiring harness off. And we're left with some of this important stuff here. We got the igniter uh, and this. It's gonna be really hard to really, really explain how this is wired up. I'm gonna keep going over it. Um, and I'm gonna try to give you a little wiring diagram that I'm going by. Because obviously, you know, this is ridiculous. What I'm going to start off doing here is hooking up the regular rectifier and the igniter. These are the two most important parts of this whole bike here that charges it and that runs the ignition coils. Um, and we, we already got the uh, wires still intact out of the uh, pickup coil going into the igniter, so that's all right. And these just go out to the... Uh, to the ignition coils and then this is this needs power to power this I'm assuming and then I don't quite know what these are for yet I gotta figure that out then we're gonna hook this up I still got the stock connector off of the regulator rectifier off of the wiring harness so these three wires coming out of the uh, stator or out of the alternator the three whites and then the the brown and green just get hooked up they're from another part of the coil i think and then the red is the hot coming out of the for charging and the blue, black is the ground so it's relatively straightforward we got i got all those wires on the other side here still or let me show you we're left with uh these are the wires coming out of the stator or the alter, the charging the alternator here we've got our three whites and the the brown and green and I left the original connectors on here just to retain a little bit of stock something so that they can, can be disconnected and then I'll solder onto the ends of these. We still got the starter solenoid and whatnot. Um, we'll, we'll get to that. I'm not the, quite there yet. Pro tip, um, I started pulling the uh, wiring harness apart to save some wire that I can reuse instead of having to use up my wire or buy some wire or what have you.
So on the other side, guys, I got the uh, rectifier plugged in. Right here's the connections for that. I got it comes over through here. This is where it comes up out through the stator. And these three white wires here goes the rectifier, and there's also this other that brown in the uh, green. Remember if I soldered that. And I also got a hot coming out of the uh, rectifier. Just put a long lead on it and cut it. And I also got a ground. It needs to be grounded. So this is the point where, okay, we got the solenoid over here. I'm actually pretty close to starting this bike up. I, I got a wire connect the ignition coils here, but we can, we're almost close to having the basic wiring for it to uh, run. But here's the starter solenoid, okay. The main positive battery cable goes to here and it also jumps off to right here is a little hot cable too and that'll be our main power. We've got to tie this from the rectifier into that. We'll make a little tree of a wire with just a couple splices out of it for power. Uh, we got to put a main fuse in here. I'm going to grab one of the ones I pulled off the bike over here. Watch out bud. And uh, probably use one of these, one of the old fuse holders that were in there. Probably just save me some couple bucks. These are this these type of fuse holders are actually all right. I kind of like them. They just use basic uh, fuses. They're pretty nice actually. So I never use these. I'll probably just put one for the main 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 and then I'll put another one for like the headlight or something so we can get by with two fuses really Let me catch you up on this wiring here. I took off off camera a little bit. So I started wiring up the hots here and uh, this is our main coming off the solenoid right here. I got that tied in with the rectifier. That's pre-fuse. And that's actually just in case uh, the bike, something were to go wrong with the wiring and the fuse blew, the bike wouldn't just keep running off of the alternator and spitting out current. So we got that pre-fuse. So if something happens, the bike will stop running uh, and we'll just run off the alternator. So, um, and then we have, uh, this is like, I call this a tree. See I'm spliced in over here. This wire is going to give power to the ignition module. And it's messy right now, I'll clean this up. And then this is gonna be our main power going up to our coils here, I'm gonna jump off both of those, and then also our main power going up to the to the steering 
uh, to power our headlight and turn signals and all that junk. So that's our main power going up there. And I also had to put a ground in. This is going to connect, I'm going to connect this to the battery, to the negative. Um, put a little crimp end on there. Because the ignition module wanted its own ground, dedicated ground, um, and the rectifier is also grounded. And you could ground anywhere on the engine or the frame, but I might as well just hook up a new, run a new ground wire. I'm probably going to need it up here too. Um, last bike I wired, I mean, I did manage to just ground on a nice screw up at the top here and just didn't have to run a ground wire, but uh, I don't see anything up there really to get it on. So I'm probably just going to run that wire. Uh, and then here's a view from this side where I'm at still. Still haven't figured out what these do. I don't think they're an integral part. I think they might have had something to do with the side stand. Because I actually I'm bypassing a whole lot of junk that was on this bike. This had a side stand switch. It had a side stand relay. It had a, a start circuit cutoff relay. It had all this stupid stuff that you don't need. Um, so we're just bypassing all of that crap. And it's pretty, pretty much going to be like chopper wiring. That's what's happening here. I'm gonna do these coils next here, give them some power. And after actually I uh, get power to the coils, this should be, if I uh, connect the battery up over there and ground it, uh, if I jump the uh, solenoid and turn over, it actually should run. So, I mean, it'll be on. I haven't wired up a kill switch. Oh, actually, <laughs> yeah, we don't just jump this wire straight to the to the coils because that's actually how you shut it off we gotta you know we gotta have a kill switch in between these to uh, cut power to the coils so I'm gonna probably run this up here first I'll probably just temporarily hook it up so it's on I'm gonna try to get this running so give these power and I'm gonna see if I can get this thing running at all so a little update guys I did get the bike running as you saw there um, and for that for that test I had just kind of jumped the hot off of my main fuse here just to get power to the coils and we don't want that so we got to run power all the way up to our main switch first and then back down here to actually power the igniter and all that however we still can take power from the rectifier I'm still taking that pre-fuse straight into back into the battery and like I said the reason for that is because uh, in case uh, <clears throat> something goes wrong um, if we actually put that back up here and it blows the bike could potentially still keep running uh, if after the fuse blows just off the alternator so we got that pre-fuse over there so that way if something did short out and the fuse blew it would cut the bike off so right now I'm splicing off of my main power I got the wire going all the way up here and here's our two wires one of our main hot wire is going to be plugged in our main switch which I'm waiting for a new one to come in the mail and then sending the power back down it's gonna be powering off of that it's gonna be powering the headlights the turn signals uh, all that nonsense the, even the coils so we're gonna run we gotta run a power down there but we're actually gotta run it through the kill switch first for the coils so these two wires right here are for the uh, kill switch so we gotta run one through there and there and then into the power for the coils, which is right here, off these red and whites. I'm gonna run it back to there so that we got our coils on our kill switch. Uh, and for a start button, since this is busted, I'm actually just gonna literally put a put momentary switch in the headlight. <laughs> so we'll get to that. Um, all right, well I got the kill switch wired up. Um, as you can see here, this is going to be our main hot wire coming up here. I got to plug that into the new switch when I get it. And off of that, we'll go into here and probably get daisy chain a couple more things off here, like the headlight and uh, whatnot. So, but we got our kill switch wired up. This this switch over here is also going to run this auxiliary auxiliary headlight. So I got to hook that up and also wire the high beam, low beam switch up over there and figure out the turn signal stuff and possibly horn but and then you know the, actually the turn signal flasher is under right under here 
and I may end up stealing power from the cable I ran back down here for that post switch of course main switch so here's the wire going to the power of the coils now it's off of the kill switch and that's hooked up so it's gonna keep rolling here praying what am I gonna do next let's see uh, I'll probably start messing with the headlight stuff I'm gonna go get the uh, start switch and put it in the headlight and I'll have to run these wires which activate the solenoid up to that momentary switch actually you can just ground one of these to whatever and then all you need is a hot supply through the uh, Momentary switch to pop this and pop the solenoid to start the bike. Yeah, you know, scream at him and curse him out and what, no. afraid of what you might do. That's a bitch at straight bars. No, this is not the case. I'm the least intimidated. Well, that, no, but then they let you go because they don't want to seem homophobic. So it's really a win win. Mm -hmm. you know, wherever you are, nobody's going to say, get up, gay dude. Nobody's going to say that. Hey, Steve. Hey, guys. Uh, I can't believe you didn't. I didn't even I didn't even hear a difference. I, I didn't I didn't catch anything here. How do you say pudding bay pumpkin? Okay. Pudding bay. Yeah, I'm just fine. That's I think it's fine. That's what Dan she's used to. I just can't win. Like even when I try to pronounce the word right, you're like, nope. You were saying yeah, value I, weird earlier. I didn't hear that. Did you say what? <laughs> All right, guys, I got the headlight and turn signals wired up now. You can see there's a bunch more wires on this thing. So the turn signals, wiring up those, you have a flasher unit, which is right here, okay? You have a main hot wire going into this, just off your, off your uh, main, one of your main hots here, after the key switch. And then just simply coming out of it is another main hot. Any load on this from the load wire will cause that to flash then we have that going into our turn signal common because the switch is basically a three-way switch and then it, it just splits out to left and right those go to the in individual actual blinkers so that's that's actually pretty straightforward it's not too bad then the headlight right here just hooked it up to the switch again has the low and the high selector We've got a ground and just out of the harness for that switch control over there, I found the wires with an ohm meter. Uh, just to tell you, find them with an ohm meter, which ones go to what, or just hey, try them out. So all I really got to do now is clean up this wiring, and this bike has is ready to go. She is ready to roll. I'm just gonna put some zip ties on it, I'm knocking everything over over here. Gonna put some zip ties on this bad boy and it will be ready to roll. So I got all the wiring wrapped up on this bike. Got zip ties on it, clean it up a little bit. It's under the seat. So everything is everything is all hunky dory on it. Got the turn signals working. See the aux lights on the high low switch works for the headlight. I just gotta mount the headlight. Get a couple screws for that. We got ourselves some turn signals. And that there on the headlight is going to be our start button. And like I told you, that's because the freaking start button's blown out of there. This is the uh, bike here, all wired up. And it's, I've taken it really as far as I want to for what I'm doing with it. Whoever buys it can mess with the front calipers, rebuild those. Really, you just gotta pop the pistons out and uh, clean, uh, lube them up. But it's definitely I uh, need some love. It does run with the new wiring? It's all dandy. Let's see here. Make sure. Make sure we're not in gear because we don't. We bypass the neutral switch, the clutch switch, all that bullshit which always messes up on these bikes and leaves you stranded. Got headlight, kill switches on, down. Hit our nice little start button. Oh, 
Oh, so now the turn signals want to work. <laughs> they were, turn signals are giving me some crap. It's the contacts in this little switch here need clean. You probably just saw that left one was flashing. High low works. We got our switch for our little yellow auxiliary light. The kickstand, I did ride it from the front to the back, but this kickstand needs a spring on it. It needs a couple little things like that, but it does run and, and move. I think perhaps the flasher or something is funny because now <laughs> I revved it up and the bright turn signal came on. Uh, oh, there we go. The turn signals are back. Uh, they just uh, they weren't working because someone came and looked at it. They just didn't. The bike didn't want to go with that guy because that guy was a total dick. He really was. That guy was a total dick. But uh, anyway, oh yeah, the brake light. Got to put a rear brake switch on her. Oops. Here we go. Got a nice little rear brake switch. It needs a little bit of love. Kill switch works. I love my little Radio Shack start button. That's like the best. Uh, look at the turn signals are all working now. Look, they're all about it. I couldn't get it to work a second ago. So, the, the, I bet I bet the flasher unit under there is a little goofy. It ain't my wiring, trust me. I'm a fucking beast. Beast.